Hello YouTube and welcome to another video and now uh, just a quick one to update you on my finished Polish infantryman uh, for the 1939 campaign. As you can see I have, um, he's very greenish brownish in colour. Uh, the palette's incredibly dull like that. Um, it's quite a fun to paint actually even though it's about three or four layers uh, per colour just to get everything to pop. So what I've done is um, the painting guide uh, I will pop it up on my blog because um, it'll be easier to follow in that respect. Uh, one place I have taken liberty is with the collar. So if you look there, let me just bring it into the light some more and into focus. You can see I've done blue collar tabs um, on the front of the left and right side of the collar. Um, that's for the infantry. I've done it slightly lighter blue than it probably should be, um, only so that it, from a distance it's more noticeable. Um, I think it pops nicely and it really rounds the figure out. Also, with regards to metals, I've tended to just use a foundry's charcoal black um, which is their black B, so the sort of mid-tone for their black um, range triad and um, then I've given it a slight gunmetal highlight um, in places where moving parts so like on the bolt of the weapon or the trigger area just to give it a little bit of shine but for the most part I've tried to dull everything down um, what I'll do is I'll put some photos at the end of this video as well just to sort of highlight the uh, just to kind of showcase the figure some more. Basing wise, pretty happy with the way it turned out. I've used tufts for the first time, these sort of dried brown winter tufts. Um, the, the campaign I'm covering took place in late summer, so you know at this point the grass is starting to it's starting to get dry, uh, grass is starting to get a little bit um, a little bit dead looking. Well, anyway, that that's what I'm thinking in my head. So um, I want I I want to sort of counterpoint it to sort of springtime um, uh, luster. Uh, so yeah, a, quite a nice figure to paint actually, took almost no time at all. I finished this guy in about, I'd say I did him just on his own with drying times and everything, probably about probably about an hour. Um, one of the things I'm not too overly keen on, and I'll try and do this, um, is that I've done eyes on this figure, I don't normally do eyes, hang on one moment, um, I don't normally do eyes. Uh, and the reason I did them in this case is because they are actually. One second, I'm trying to do. Eyes there. No luck. Um, I've done eyes. Um, I'm not a huge fan. You'll see them in the photos. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of doing eyes on miniatures. They never look quite right to me. But uh, I think I've come out alright in this. The uh, only reason I've done them in this case is because the helmet so so far tilted back. His eyes are actually quite um, quite visible. Normally they'd obviously be in the shadows of the helmet, so I just don't bother even painting uh, the, the eye socket area because they'll be in shadow. So there you go. Um, I enjoyed painting the figure. Uh, the basing style I quite like. Um, on some of them, so maybe not this one, but on some of them what I'll be doing is putting some uh, brick, uh, some modelled bricks, scale bricks down, and then uh, those will be a nice bright orange again to just add some colour to what is otherwise relatively dull miniature. So that one's done. So that's my test model. I think I'm happy with the uh, with the scheme I've got going there for the poles to be able to move forward and actually batch paint a bit now. Because one of the things I'm finding with the Vallejo, um, sort of Vallejo uh, <laughs> paints is, paints is that um, one drop goes a very long way and uh, I feel like I'm wasting paint a lot of time if I paint one figure at a time. So what I'm going to try and do is just make sure that I um, that I get the maximum maximum use of the paints. Uh, do let me know what you think about the basing style and also just about the colour tone in general, like the highlighting style and that sort of stuff. Always looking forward to feedback. So yesterday I gave you a sneak peek of this chap. He is a 1914 BEF um, Corporal. Um, again, I'll put photos at the end. That'll be better. Um, what I've done with him is it's a this is a woodbine design figure. So he's got a separate head. Um, I've done him in a serge car uh, um, uh, yeah in a serge khaki. Uh, so quite quite a greenish tone. Uh, this is following the recipe that I got from Mark Hargreaves, who is uh, who runs op over Open Sites blog, um, and he's an am he's an amazing chap. His paintings in in incredible. So I've more or less followed what he's done. The only difference is because he's from the this is a, a corporal from the Rifle Brigade. I've given him rifle chevrons. Um, so what that is is it's black with a dark green um, chevrons on the top, uh, and his hat band is also. Um, uh, black rather than well not the hat band but there's a sort of strap that runs across the front of the hat uh, and his service cap um, band is uh, strap is is black instead of uh, brown and equally his buttons which you can't see here because I can't pull the focus right um, are black instead of um, brass because uh, that's what the rifle brigade have the reason I did this is because uh, as a rifleman myself this is uh, one of the antecedent um, regiments to current British regiment the rifles so 
yeah, this guy is probably going to be part of the the Oxen Bucks um, light infantry or the the you know the rifle brigade or something like that, who took part in the retreat from Mons um, and fought with distinction. So, yeah, quite quite fun to paint again. Lots of uh, with these World War Two and World War One figures, very green and brown. So it's always important, I think, to try and find little places where you can make a miniature pop and things like doing the chevrons I mean I've, I've exaggerated the size of the chevrons for instance and the water bottle cap is blue um, it's just a way of bringing some color out in what is otherwise a relatively dull figure the face has also become a lot more important um, because obviously they become a focal point for a miniature that gets otherwise quite washed out um, here's a work in progress at the moment this is a um, uh, I imagine he's, he's going to be a divisional um, staff officer uh, and uh, he has he has very different color palette from the from the enlisted men or the NCOs. Uh, he wears um, a slightly finer uniform. So I'm currently working on the color on uh, sort of tone tones here. I've got my color scheme down. I'm just sort of grinding my way through, trying to figure out exactly how the colors are going to react. I'm quite new to the Vallejo paints, um, uh, but I'm getting some great results from them. So I'm a huge fan at the moment uh, of these. And just one more time, here's the Polish chap again. So yes, there you go. So Polish infantry are ready for the ready for action. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll just pop some photos at the end here, just to kind of 